This is Sri Lanka, an island nation located off the coast of South India. Many of you may know this country for its popularity in the sport of cricket, as a frequently visited tourist destination, or for its fine tea. Right now, the citizens of Sri Lanka are going through rampant blackouts, frequent curfews, and severe food and fuel shortages. They've even had to close down schools and cancel exams due to shortages of paper. The country is going through a severe economic crisis. An economic crisis in Sri Lanka which is becoming increasingly dramatic with residents' life savings virtually disappearing into thin air. One estimate from Johns Hopkins University shows real inflation at over 130% in March. It's approximately six times the official rate by the government. Nearly everything is in short supply, especially imported goods. The government is even asking airlines to stop refueling in the country to save on fuel. So how could such a disaster happen to a country which just three years ago had the fastest growing economy in South Asia? Well, first, we need to look at a powerful family called the Rajapakshas. In November of 2005, a man named Mahinda Rajapaksha was elected to be the president of Sri Lanka. Soon, he would go on to appoint various family members to occupy major government positions. His brothers were appointed to be in charge of major administrations, including the defense ministry, the finance ministry, and other activities such as irrigation and economic development. In the years to come, he would go on to appoint brothers, sons, nephews, daughter-in-laws, and other relatives to take over top positions in the government. And by then, the country had turned into a family business. At the time, Sri Lanka was battling through a horrific civil war against a rebel group called the Tamil Tigers. During his rule, the Sri Lankan armed forces managed to militarily defeat the Tamil Tigers and therefore ended a 26-year-long civil war. Following the defeat, many Sri Lankans considered the family as heroes for bringing peace, safety and security to the nation, although there have been many reports on blatant war crimes, corruption and questionable deals. However, these scandals did not stop the Rajapakshas from going on a spending spree. The Rajapakshas kick-started various infrastructure projects such as highways, cities and an airport which is now empty for most of the time. They tried to bring in rapid economic growth in a short period of time by borrowing heavily and attracting foreign capital from countries such as China. The strategy worked and the Sri Lankan economy boomed, vaulting the country past Ukraine, the Philippines and Indonesia. It lifted more than 1.6 million people from poverty and raised people's standard of living. In 2019, Sri Lanka was recognized by the World Bank as an upper middle income nation. But all of this came at a cost. While the economy boomed and the country flourished in the short term, most Sri Lankans didn't realize the fact that this short-term strategy was a recipe for disaster. Sri Lanka's debt to other countries tripled from 2006 to 2012, and by this point, the country was borrowing more money than it made. And as the years passed, the family government made more and more mistakes that made circumstances not so favorable for the citizens of Sri Lanka. In the year 2019, Mahinda's younger brother, Gotabaya, contested to become president. In order to get elected, he promised major tax cuts, which, when he eventually got elected, would go on to reduce the government's revenue by 25%. What's worse is that by 2020, Covid destroyed the tourism industry, which was Sri Lanka's main source of income that was used to pay back foreign debt. Then 2021 rolls around and Russia and Ukraine go to war against each other. 
This critically affected Sri Lanka's tourism industry because most of their tourist income came from Russians and Ukrainians. Later that year, the family government made another terrible mistake. In order to prevent the drain of foreign exchange reserves, all fertilizer imports were completely banned. The government claimed that it would make Sri Lanka the first country to run on a 100% organic food supply. The growth of the plants is affected, usually by this time we're harvesting, about 7 months or 75 days after planting. The area is covered by the plants, but this time the growth is far less. Sri Lanka's foreign debt kept increasing. Its foreign reserves were draining, the tourism industry had collapsed, and there was a severe shortage of food supply due to the ban on organic fertilizer. If we lose our jobs because of the issues in the country and we're unable to find any other employment, we will have to stay home. So we won't have anything to eat and we won't be able to look into any of our needs. Since basics such as petrol and gas have to be paid for in foreign currency, there was a shortage of these necessities. To make things worse, in Sri Lanka, there has to be fuel to generate electricity. And since there is no fuel, Sri Lankans have to go through frequent power cuts. On the 29th of June 2022, Sri Lanka became the first country to ban the sale of petrol since the fuel crisis in the 1970s. For ordinary Sri Lankans, the situation was such that there was no petrol for transport, no electricity for work, lighting and other purposes, and no gas to cook. Sri Lankans had enough of the situation. People started protesting all around the country. The government tried to squash the protests, but they couldn't stop the outraged Sri Lankans. The Rajapakshas, who were once held as heroes, were now the nation's number one enemy. As you can see, scenes are extremely tense here. This is outside the Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa's house. Violence once plagued this nation during decades of civil war. Now, an economic emergency has left millions struggling to survive. The president had already fled the country and protesters took over the palace of a president who had already fled. This is what happens when governments lose control of an economy. All in all, it's been a deadly combination of mismanagement by the family government and a set of unfavorable economic and geopolitical factors that caused this island nation to crash. Nobody deserves what has happened to the people of Sri Lanka. As of now, the only solution for the country to run is to get more loans. Sri Lanka is currently seeking $3 billion to pay for basic necessities like fuel. There's really not much the current government can do to save the Sri Lankan economy, and we wish nothing but the best for Sri Lanka and its people. If you're watching this from Sri Lanka, stay safe out there. Anyway, if you've made it to this point, thank you for watching. Cheers guys! My name is Ammar and you've been watching The Blue Network.